one who runs the cell. Who is that? That's nucleus. Nucleus is a director of the cell. Nucleus has got all the information and that programming that is required to run that cell, to sustain the life of that cell, to let all the processes happening in that cell. We are going to talk about nucleus in this section. So as you can see in the picture, this is nucleus. This is the nucleus that you can see in here. The purplish centered thing. This is an animal cell and in the center you could see that how the nucleus is placed and how the endoplasmic reticulum is surrounding the nucleus. And with the help of this endoplasmic reticulum, the information is, you know, is it, it passes to each and every organelle or component of that cell, right? And that is very necessary because nucleus is the director of the cell and it takes charge, it is the in charge of everything that is happening within that cell. So nucleus is the brain of the cell. Everything will happen according to it. It has got all the information. Nucleus is the brain of the cell. Let us see the structure of nucleus. So you see this is the nucleus. You see there is a nucleolus inside the nucleus. Nucleus has its own nucleus, kind of, right? So nucleolus is there. You see the chromatin, the chromatin. Then you see there are tiny pores on nucleus. These tiny pores are the nuclear pores. And then you have a nuclear envelope. So, nucleus, it is a dense protoplasmic body that contains the hereditary information which controls the cell activities as well as transfers the information to the next generation. Yes, nucleus has got all the genetic information within it in the form of the DNA. This DNA replicates and because of this DNA, this genetic information is being passed on from one generation to the next during the process of reproduction. By the process of reproduction, when the offspring is produced from the parent, right? So, a nucleus is that body that contains the genetic information and it, it is that hereditary information that's passed on from one generation to another. And then it also has got all the information how the cell will execute, how the processes will run, you know, everything, every sort of information is there in the nucleus. Nucleus lies in the median or maybe in the central position of the cell. In the plants, in that case, since the plants have got large vacuoles, the nucleus has been shifted to one side, okay? In general, nucleus is placed mostly in the center of the cell. Just like I said, in the mature plants, when the vacuoles are really, really large, the nucleus is shifted slowly to, to one side, that is the periphery. In prokaryotes, in prokaryotes, the nuclear membrane is absent and hence it's not called as nucleus but nucleoid. Of course, the prokaryotes do have the genetic material but that's not sorted. That's not uh, very distinct or that's not very nicely arranged, okay. The genetic material is suspended within the cell irregularly and that piece of genetic material, that body, that's called as nucleoid. The difference is that in the prokaryotes that, nu that, that genetic material doesn't have got a nuclear membrane as in the case of nucleus and hence that very thing that genetic information that's not called as nucleus but it's called as nucleoid. You can say that the nucleus of the prokaryotes is called as nucleoid. You can understand in that sense as well because it also does contain the genetic information of that organism. Now, there's an interesting thing. Cells like the C cell or the sieve elements in the plants, 
or the RBCs, the red blood cells, that is the erythrocytes in the animals, they do not have a nucleus. Do you believe that? There are cells which do not have nucleus and I told you that the nucleus is a director of the cell or the brain of the cell. How is that possible? That's possible, pretty possible. I'll tell you the reality behind it. The reality is, you know, in the case of RBCs, in the, in the earlier stage when the RBCs are just growing, they do have nucleus. Once they get mature, they shed off the nucleus in order to give uh, the flexibility to their own cell body. Okay, so they just shed off. Okay, in sieve elements again, that space can be utilized for other purpose. So the nucleus is shed off, right? So nucleus was there once upon a time, but later with the age as they mature, the nucleus is shed off. And that's why mature red blood cells will not have nucleus, but RBCs will have nucleus. Red blood cells will have nucleus when they were growing. Once they are mature, they'll shed off their nucleus in order to provide that flexibility to their own body while well, they have to pass through the tiny capillaries inside the body. Again, the fact is cells without nucleus cannot survive for a long time, right? If you remove the nucleus from a cell, that cell will not survive for a long time. Another thing is one nucleus. There are conditions, okay. A cell can have one nucleus or more than one. So that condition is named. One nucleus is present in most of the cells, you know, but some cells also have more than one nucleus, okay. So the cells that have a single nucleus are called as uninucleate or uninucleated cells. The cells that have got more than one nucleus in them, they are called as multinucleate or multinucleated cells. Like the cells of our muscles, you know, because we require so much of energy, so much of energy is consumed in the muscle cells, a series of cells they join and so it appears to be that a single cell of the muscle has got many nucleus, okay, and that's why there are, that's multinucleated cells also.